Kol amal adam. No matter how much toil and effort a person exerts, he would not even be able to repay God for one breath that God has granted us. Moses ascends Mount Sinai and is set on a journey for 40 days and 40 nights. The unimaginable happens and before returning, the Jewish people, because of primarily the Erev Rav, the mixed multitude, have forced Aaron to make a golden calf. This is a very tragic moment for the Jewish people. It was something which really forevermore kind of ruined the relationship between God and the Jewish people. And then eventually, as we know, God gave the Jewish people forms of atonement, specifically through the Mishkan, the portable tabernacle, and Paraduma, the red heifer, and other types of mitzvot to atone for the sin of the golden calf. Now, after Moses comes and sees the Jewish people, and sees what they have done, he, as we know, breaks the tablets, but then he goes back up for a second time to Mount Sinai to convince God to forgive the Jewish people for what they have done. And God's not giving in. Moses is trying and trying and trying. Moses said something quite remarkable. He says, if you look in Exodus chapter 32, verse 32 in Exodus, the Torah says, V'ataim tisa hatatam, God, forgive the Jewish people. Vim ayin, and if you don't, Moses tells him, Meheni na misifrecha asher katafta, remove me, erase my name from the book that you have written, from the Torah. And obviously, God, with his ultimate compassion and mercy, eventually forgives the Jewish people for the sin of the golden calf. However, Moses, being how great he was, and by saying something, with, even with a condition, by saying, take me out of the Torah, if you don't forgive the Jewish people, even though he forgave the Jewish people, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did forgive the Jewish people, that strength, unfortunately, of Moses making a condition did take place, but not the whole way. If we look at the Torah, the Torah has 54 portions, 54 parashiot. The first 12, being in Genesis, obviously has no mention of Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu. From Shemot, the beginning of the book of Exodus, all the way till the end of Deuteronomy, those four last books of the Torah, in every single Torah portion, Moses' name is mentioned at least once and multiple times. There's one Torah portion that's not mentioned, and that is this week's Torah portion. In Parashat Tetzaveh, we do not find Moses' name, not even once. And the Zohar says this exact point, that Moses was granted that his name will be in the Torah, but it will be really removed in one of the parashiot. The Zerah Shimshon now asks, why specific this parasha, the parasha of Tetzaveh, why is this the Torah portion that is missing his name, so to say as a punishment for him challenging and arguing with God to remove his name from the Torah. The Zed Shimshon says, we need to go back. We need to go back to the first dialogue between God and Moses. And this was when God reve revealed himself to Moses in the form of a burning bush. And he was convincing Moses to take this position as the leader and the deliverer of the Jewish people. And Moses was refusing time and time again. Seven days of dialogue and going back and forth until Moses finally conceded. Moses tells God, I have a heavy tongue, I have a lisp, I'm not a spokesperson, who am I, what am I? And God was on and on and on telling him to take it and finally Moses took it. Even though Moses did take the position, he was punished for arguing with God and abstaining from taking that position that he was 
commanded to by the Creator Himself. The Kiuna, the priesthood, was supposed to be also Moses's and his descendants. Meaning, Moses was supposed to be the king, the leader, the priest, the prophet. He was the one-man show that the Jewish people were supposed to be led by. However, after him not agreeing initially to taking the position, God took away the priesthood. He took away the keuna from Moshe Rabbeinu and he gave it to his brother Aharon. Now, understanding that episode, the Zerah Shimshon says, what was the foundation of the disagreement between Moses and God? Why was God so wanting that Moses help him, so to say, redeem the Jewish people? And why was Moses abstaining and trying to avoid to take that position? So the Zerah Shimshon explains that Moses understood that if God would single-handedly redeem the Jewish people from this exile in Egypt, they would never be able to go back into exile. They would be summoned to the land of Israel forevermore. And his intention in so was to promote the coming of the Mashiach in its speedy way and that the Jewish people would never have to be exiled again. That was his intention. God argued. God said that if I take the Jewish people out of Egypt, you're right that I will not be able to exile them. But what if they do something that they are deserving to go into exile? God would have no other choice but to destroy the Jewish people themselves. It's kind of like the concept, why didn't God build the Bet HaMikdash? Why did He have human beings, mankind, Shlomo Melech eventually building it? The same concept, because if and when, unfortunately, the Jewish people would sin, God would not, able, would not be able to exert His wrath and His anger and His punishment onto the temple, this physical structure that was man-made, and He would have to unfortunately do so and exert his wrath and his punishment onto the Jewish people, destroying them once and for all. Has shalom. So God told Moses, I need you to be my partner in taking the Jewish people out of Egypt. I need human intervention. Because by you joining me, God tells Moses, in taking the Jewish people out, now if they will fault, when they will sin, they will be able to be punished by a lower degree of punishment of just exile opposed to complete destruction. And this is where Moses and God had their disagreement. And obviously, God proved Moses wrong. And Moses was punished. Moses was now only the king, the leader, the prophet of the Jewish people but not the priest, not the Kohen Gadol, and not his children being Kohanim. They were, however, demoted to Levi'im. They were not the ones who did the main service in the temple and in the tabernacle. They did secondary, they helped, they sang, but they were not the main focus, the main workers, the service to God in the Mishkan and then later in the Bet HaMikdash. The reason why the Zerah Shimshon says that Moses' name is not found in this week's parasha is to show and to prove that because Moses disagreed and argued with God in taking that initial calling of his position to be the deliverer of the Jewish people, the very parasha which should have been his, what does this week speak about primarily? All of the garments of the Kohen Gadol. What he wore, he wore the four regular garments that a regular Kohen wore, and another additional four garments. This parasha should have been speaking about Moses and his service. However, the parasha really speaks about Aaron and his children, and the way they had to dress and serve in the Mishkan, and then later in the Bet HaMikdash. Zerah Shimshon says, Deliberately, the Torah omitted Moses' name from this week's Torah portion. 
in order to show us that he missed out on something that should have been his. This was his. However, he was punished for not conceding and not giving in to, and not agreeing to what God's will was. In life, listen well, in life, God speaks to us. He requests stuff from us. He has a mandate for each and every human being. Some are clear, some are less, some are completely vague. For example, the Torah tells us many things we need to do. Commandments, some are restrictions, some are obligations. That's God speaking to us. That's God telling us what He would like for us to do in order to get close to Him, in order to benefit and enjoy life to its fullest. There's little le less clear things. There's things which are not so clear in the Torah. Maybe they're more in the sages, more in different types of holy books that were written that only selected few and the fortunate are able to learn. But that's also God speaking to them. And then there are those which are not too clear at all. They're just different signs, situations, people we meet, jobs we, we get, jobs we don't get, things that we have, things that we lose. All of these are signs and God communicating to us. What's very hard is the more vague they are, the more doubtful we are, is that really God communicating to us? But what we need to understand, something that Moses at his highest level, and we're not here to ever criticize Moses, but we learn from also his seemingly shortcomings because of how great that he was. And we see that if he would have had a little more faith in God, if he would have believed that what God is coming and telling him to do is the best thing and the only thing for him to do, so he would have been the Kohen Gadol, the high priest as well. Us too. We need to understand that what happens to us in our lives comes specifically from God. God's telling us things. He's requesting things from us. He's guiding us down certain paths for our own benefit. We must not overlook and miss those opportunities. Those opportunities for growth. Those opportunities to be the person we are supposed to be the person that God intended on us to be. Let us not miss our opportunities in life. Let us not close our ears and shy away from different requests, communications and obligations God sends our way in order to be the best Jew and the best person we can possibly be.